My name is uh, FPV Wine, and I've had an addiction now for four months. And through those four months, I have learned a lot. And I am here to give you my top 10 tips. My number one tip, and you've probably heard it before, get an FPV simulator, get yourself, get yourself a controller and only a controller and a sim and you'll be away. Get practicing. I think I got 30 hours before I took it to the actual FPV IRL in real life. I bought Liftoff. They need to upgrade the levels. Liftoff and then uh, Liftoff Micros, which I got a bit confused. The Micros doesn't actually give you access to the, the bigger levels, which I feel they should. It's the same name, but it's a different game. Bizarre. This is like a it's a plug-in, but it's not a plug-in. It's not the same levels. I get that a mini whoop isn't for outdoor use, generally speaking. A sim is gonna save you one money and two, a lot of crashes in real life. Get yourself in a simulator, get practicing before you use a real drone. I highly, highly, strongly, strongly recommend it. My favorite at the moment is Uncrashed for racing, for freestyle, learning tricks. I love Uncrashed and I even entered their June competition. Next up, start off with a mini whoop like this. This is the Better FPV Meteor 65 Pro. Joshua Bardwell doesn't actually recommend this one because the props are heavy. I quite like it, fly it around the house. This one is actually broken, managed to break it. If you're flying around people, this is quiet. It's not gonna hurt if it hits you or if it hits other people. It's basically a toy compared to something like this, which is gonna hurt. I've already phoned this into a mate. Sorry, Frank. Have you like, tried to go to the oh! <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly fine. So that's my number two tip. And awesome for flying indoors and outdoors on a non-windy day. My next number three tip, my first flight out with the Darwin Cine 25. I managed to fly this one around a cliff and it was my first flight long distance and I, it wasn't even that long distance probably 50 meters and this is an upgrade now but lost signal and i can't recommend strong enough learn about analog signal if you're flying analog or digital signal and knowing how far you can go where the best positioning is You could position yourself 20 meters away in a field and suddenly the signal will be a loads, loads better. I don't know mathematically or scientifically speaking about signal, but you learn as time progresses. So don't expect too much out of your signal. I flew this one behind a cliff. Hopefully I've got the footage. And I lost signal. I panicked. No. Oh, we lost the lens. This also goes in with it. Do not panic. Try and relax. I haven't even put this in my list. Flick it onto angle mode. You start losing your signal and just make sure it's calibrated and just fire it up a little bit and it should come back. That has saved me a number of times now since learning the hard way to keep the signal and not go behind objects with analog at least. Starting off in a big open space away from people and also importantly, animals. I live in the countryside. I was looking for a field somewhere different to where I usually fly and I thought I'd found the perfect field. And this is another piece of strong advice is check the field three times. Make sure you can see all the fences and there's nothing inside. I nearly died because cows came hurtling towards me after I must have been flying in the field for about 15 to 20 minutes. And after those 15 to 20 minutes, suddenly a herd of cows was flying towards me. Managed to get out. Then I realized that I'd managed to crash land my drone away from the cows, away from anybody. And then there they are coming running for me, the drone drops, and I realized it was still in the field. So I did have to go and retrieve that. And amazingly, the battery did survive, but if you, it, it was in long grass, you can't just fly out of long grass away from the cows. So I had to run back in and get the drone. So be careful where you're flying, big open space, 
nice and relaxed and don't try going beyond your your level especially if you've come from a simulator know your level and don't try and push it in real life too much next up i did have it where is it next up is battery care i was watching mr steel who says he doesn't go under 3.6 i now follow that rule i was going down to 3.3 and i've had problems with my batteries going down that low i might already be a minute away still so i can fly it back nice and easy and i don't have to panic if you're at 3.3 volts and you're still pretty far away and it's telling you to land now you could lose your drone especially if you're over water or buildings and just looking after your batteries make sure they don't go below three volts try and understand about um, battery sag and the fact that when you first plug in a battery muy fuerte <laughs> a lot of power when you first plug it in and not a lot of power when you are at the 3.6 3.3 to 3.6 you're not gonna have so much boost and you've got to be careful especially with older batteries so bring that drone back nice and safe this next point my first drone the better fpv cetus x they were very good better fpv in replacing the the camera module and the vtx i have to say that this one over i can't use this indoors it overheats and my next piece of advice is always make sure that you've you're either flying it or you've got it near a fan when you're flying it the, the propellers keep your vtx cool you've also got a set setting in better flight that you can change to make sure that it stays at 25 watts until armed so it's like low power until armed and that's what i use just so that it doesn't overheat when you're you've armed it you've got the battery in and off it goes i had to learn the hard way quality control on this one better fpv did replace it but when you're in better flight Get yourself a fan uh, maybe not this one but get yourself a fan place it near the, the drone and just make sure that vtx is getting plenty of air when it's not on because otherwise you're going to burn out that vtx and i didn't know about that for a number of weeks as a beginner so make sure to get that vtx nice and cool when you're not using it when you're not flying it basically i wish this piece of advice was given to me i was starting off on a crappy screw fix soldering iron and i've now upgraded to this bad boy and I can't tell you or recommend to you enough just to get, I think this one was 25 pounds, get a decent soldering iron. This one plugs into USB-C, which is perfect for travel. If you're out, if you're racing out in the field, you can use this, plug it into USB-C and off you go. So much easier to solder those smaller components compared to that fat boy that I had from Screwfix. Not very good for the smaller components. So get yourself a nice, nice soldering iron. It will make your job, especially if you're new to soldering, easier, much easier. And go and watch a tutorial on soldering. Ah, and along with a good soldering iron, the same tip really, get yourself a nice toolkit. I think I got it from Trigger Mills. Shout out to the Southwest people watching this. I think this cost me like eight pounds. Decent little toolkit. This one's got loads of different heads that I can put on. Super handy. Put that in the backpack again for out in the field if you've gone racing or something. It's not massive, not expensive. Save you a lot of time using that one. I've tried twice now to make this Crux 35 build in a Flying Fish 3.5 Volador, bringing the VTX over to the main board with the FC. And the last time I did it, I put it upside down on top of the FC and I didn't have a smoke stopper and it went boom. And a little bit of smoke came out. One of these inside here had just melted together and it wasn't having a good connection to the battery. Get yourself a smoke stopper. Again, another at like eight pounds. I know that, you know, eight pounds here, eight pounds there, it gets expensive. This could save you, I think that build cost me just under 200 pounds. You know, you're gonna need a new FC or ESC if you blow that up or possibly everything, camera, VTX, this will save you. Um, and also a multimeter. I haven't actually managed to get myself a multimeter. Someone in my comments section earlier mentioned a multimeter. So smoke stopper, go and buy one. If you're a beginner, do not cheap out. This is going to save you. Also makes it a little bit safer. Next on the list is a buzzer. I've fit myself a buzzer just here. This is a loud buzzer. And what my good old friend Matthew told me is that the noise when you plug it in is actually the motors. The motors is what gives you that noise. However, and as I've found, been lucky enough to find my drones when I've lost them in fields of long grass, but a buzzer is, it just saves you. I flew it recently in a high grass cornfield, flying over it, and I just didn't have that worry of when it goes down, it's got a buzzer. The buzzer's also got a battery on it, so if the battery comes disconnected, you're going to at least be able to find your drone again and hopefully the battery if it's in long grass really loud 
if you're new to FPV, you are going to learn that you are going to be walking and collecting your drone from crashes a lot. You're going to get a lot of exercise in walking up and down parks, fields, bandos, wherever you are. A buzzer is going to save you from completely losing your stuff, your drones. It's going to help you. Next one is especially for countries like the UK where it rains a lot. I have now done it to all my drones. Conformal coating. I've added conformal coating to all my drones. It's highly toxic. If you're going to use it, use it in a nice open space with lots of air. And I would recommend if you're building your own drone, you aren't happy with anything, maybe the VTX is playing up. In my case, that's what was happening and still is. Make sure that you don't put conformal coating on because as I've found, conformal coating will really mess up your soldering iron if you don't keep it clean and if you put too much on like I probably have. It doesn't help your soldering iron at all and that has been a difficulty soldering my build after using conformal coating. So use it, but Use it when you're definitely finished with your build and happy with everything. I always recommended the silicon stuff, so I've got the silicon stuff, but you can get acrylic and I think another type as well. Again, I think it was like 10 pounds off of eBay and it's gonna save your drone if it lands in a puddle. And there's loads of puddles, loads of wet grass in the UK. So that's wrapped up 10 bits of advice that I can give you uh, with this absolute love of FPV droning that I found since the middle of March. My final bit of like extra bonus advice would be make sure that you have everything when you go out flying, make sure it's all tightened up. So make sure that you get it nice and tight, the propellers are on, don't put on your propellers backwards like I've done a few times. It makes a strange ambience noise when you're going full throttle. Just make sure everything's plugged in, Make sure you, look, even now, I've just noticed that one's come undone. I've been flying that one with the VTX out <laughs> as I make the video. That's brilliant. So just make sure everything's screwed in nice and tight. Not over tight, but you know, nice and firm. That's what I always do. Most flights, check everything is in good nick. It's just a good habit to get into, to make sure that everything's plugged in. Even when you get to a flight location, I tend to now just check, fly it out 50 meters nice and carefully. And then if I want to do more, freestyle stuff after that that's fine because i've checked the vtx is fine i hope you've all enjoyed my 10 tips four months in fpv thank you ever so much for all the comments last time if you haven't already like and subscribe if you have any questions or any suggestions feel free to leave a comment and i will do my best to get back to you thanks for watching go out and fly safely and enjoy fpv as much as i do peace